it's time to do something I haven't done in a very, very long fucking time because I just don't like doing it anymore. Anyway, this week at Bungie, let's see what they got on the thingy. Uh, scrolling down, screw this first picture. That's a big sandbox. They're talking about sandbox changes for those that aren't in tune with the intricacies of Destiny sandbox. This will be a lot to take in. You might need to wait a bit for a fellow community member to break down some of these changes to be less daunting. From a high level, we're recovering the following today. A handful of goals from the team, Glaive's commentary on their design and some plans for the future, flinch and airborne gameplay, tuning one hit kills in the crucible, and then general tuning for special ammo, exotic weaponry, legendary archetypes, and a slew of weapon perks is what they are saying. Okay. So let's get into it. We got Proctor. He introduces the levers to tune how players build their airborne gunplay. Destiny has an extremely fluid and expressive airborne movement, but that movement must be balanced against ground players, lest it become oppressive. We want players to enjoy that play style to be able to build into it, but they will have to make tough choices about what they leave behind to do so. As he's stating this, and before I finish this last sentence to this part of it, I hope this doesn't affect uh, Solar 3.0. And I'm hoping that somewhere down the line, Icarus Dash becomes an aspect or a fragment or a fragment. Um, that'd be great. Anyway, uh, successfully engaging in the air will no longer be as simple as put an Icarus Grip mod on it. But the upside for heavily investing in it will be higher. Cool. Allow players to mitigate for flinch. Eh. Excessive flinch is a frequent complaint from players, most importantly when using primaries, um, taking large chunks of damage from enemies. Players should be able to invest in flinch resistance and baseline flinch should be lower on primary weapons, but hand tune per archetype so that the weapons that need flinch resistance have the easiest access to it. Reduce the amount of number, uh, reduce the number of one hit kills in PVP. Sandbox overall wants to reduce the number of one hit kills. Let's see uh, and move towards primary gunplay again. With the weapons, this means special tuning um, for both effectiveness of specific weapons and special weapon uptime overall. Uh, and one key primary outlier. I wonder what that one key primary outlier is. Address common feedback on weapons across all game modes. Each season, the, se the team Looks at legendaries and exotic weapons that are over and underperforming and make adjustments. Season 17 will be a larger pass than usual with more of a focus on underused weapons and PVP balance. With our goal stated, let's get to the meat of all of that. Now, before I go into this next part of it, like I feel like, and this, this is just my, my thoughts on it. When they when they gotta put up a twab like this and it's this beefy and they gotta go down and break down all this stuff and say like hey in the future this is what we're gonna have to hit like when they say they gotta they gotta go in and look at the things that are overtuned and underperforming and all that kind of stuff these are things they talked about before but I get it you know I mean they gotta readdress it and then they gotta put a bigger thumb on it when after the initial launch of a new you know expansion in the first season of that expansion because like all this stuff is just super od like they wanted it to be. So that they can adjust for it later. But anyway, moving on, let's talk about the glaive. So we got glaive of rave is what they're calling this next section. We've noticed that several aspects of how glaives interact with weapon and armor perks don't match player expectations, and want to make some time. Uh, want to take some time to clarify the intent. The changes included in season 17, and the logic we'll be using for the future. Uh, I, I for one, am not a fan of glaives. They they're just swords in the special slot, in my opinion. They don't do anything special other than shoot a little bolt, and then that's it. You swing and you do a three-hit combo and blah. Uh, so, yeah. The basic melee attack, not a weapon attack, doesn't consume ammo and deals kinetic damage. So, it's more like an unpowered punch from a sword swing. What did I just say? <laughs> like, allowing buffs to weapon damage to uh buffs to weapon damage to apply to glaives melees would be powerful for something without an ammo limitation particularly in pvp where even a small damage buff would allow for incredibly fast two hit kills also in general we prefer to increase glaive melee damage directly as we're doing in fact instead of effectively increasing uh, effectively making weapon damage perks mandatory on glaives glaives already have a long distance range Lunge range and increasing this is 
at a at all results in unreliable behavior over the network. So no melee lunge distance buffs for glaives. Their intent, glaive melee build, um, glaive melees should activate perks that trigger off base melee damage or kills. For example, ammo refill from glaive, gray robber, weapon damage buffs that stack times five, like swashbuckler uh, and so on. Uh, and then ammo refills for like the sealed aham car grips. Uh, glaive melee should not activate perks that trigger off-powered melee damage or kills or required extended subclass melee energy, such as Combination Blow or Assassin's Cow. Glaive melees should benefit from melee damage buffs, such as Winner's Guile or Worm God's Breast. And the glaive melee should not benefit from weapon damage buffs, such as Rampage Kill Clip swash and Swashbuckler. Which was something I thought was kind of weird when I first got the glaive in hand, and Kill Clip is one of the immediate perks that you can get. I think it's kind of weird that it procs, because it's not a shooting projectile weapon kind of thingy like the projectile portion of it should proc that but not the melee part right um and then glaive projectile should benefit from the weapon damage buff like i just said all right with the exception set there are some inconsistencies with how these are implemented in the game and we already can see that and we just mentioned that too all right here's what we changed during season 16 largely bug fixes with some quality of life changes uh and so on glaive projectiles hits uh glaive projectiles hits to reach maximum energy decreases from six to four the me uh, melee can now be interrupted by hunter dodge the great robber perk now pulls from reserves on glaives instead of generating ammo out of thin air glaives no longer get stuck in clang recovery when using a melee attack on each other sealed harm car grabs no longer reload glaives on projectile hits but does on melee hits glaives melees can no longer stun lock health high health combatants and then glaive melee kills are now tracked in match history for bounties and so forth what they're changing in season 17 um they're increasing the melee damage versus pve enemies the shield grants 97.5 percent damage resistance in pve 75 percent in pvp uh, and they've reduced the energy drain speed while shielded by 30 percent and then they increase the projectile speed dependent on the range stat so at zero the stat increases from 30 to 60 uh and then the at 100 set it increases from 80 to 100 and then we get a nice little picture of guardians rocking their glit the exotic glaives i think that's what they are i don't know, could care less uh exotic glaives have all been buffed as well go check that out the uh, titans they are now gain an overshield while inside the bubble with helmet saint 14 and now it applies it as well when Lord of dawn is there the war, uh, warlock ones they have increased speed and acceleration of the healing turret projectiles and then the hunter glaives have tripled the damage of the wave detonation increased and increased the number of enemies it can chain to from four to eight okay now global changes flinch something i've been hearing a lot about on twitter people complaining about the flinch on hand cannons for the most part um nothing really too much with snipers and anything else but just primary weapons in general uh they are built for, so they're saying they're built for stability. Uh, they've rebuilt the stability weapon stat to grant flinch resistance in addition to its other effects with a maximum flinch resistance of 10% to 25% dependent on weapon archetypes. All right. With this change, players can build for flinch resistance more easily on weapons that they feel are more than, uh, they feel flinch in more than others. Okay. On special weapons. Oh, it's less on special weapons, and then that's probably about it. And then when under fire, you know, it'll be easy to ma maintain. For internal play tests, you may not feel the difference when use using just one source of flinch resistance, but when stacking two or more sources, the benefit is strong. So I'm guessing they're saying instead of having one person shoot it, if you're going in game, like if you're going to a private match and you want to test this out for yourself, instead of having one person shoot back at you so you can see the flinch when you're ADSing, um, have two people from two different angles shoot at you because a lot of the times and I felt this too if I went into a pvp match um, And I was engaging in like two or three people in front of me the two people in front of me wouldn't really cause me too much flinch But that guy back there would be running my backbeat Okay, all right note that higher zoom weapons are more affected by flinch which we took into account when tuning these numbers. And obviously to break down here, auto rifles and submachine guns and bows, 25%. Uh, pulse rifles, scout rifles, sidearms, machine guns, 20%. Hand cannons, trace rifles are 15%. 10% for fusion rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, grenade launchers, 
uh, both breech and drum, linear fusion rifles, both special and heavy versions, and rocket launchers. Note that a stability stat of below 20 will technically have a small flinch resistance penalty, but not only, but only have around five weapons. Uh, there's only around five weapons that have a stability stat in that range anyway, so it shouldn't even really matter. Why do they have that kind of that stat anyway? Probably should bump those up just so they can be in line with everything else since it's only five weapons. Does it make sense to not? Moving on. We're going to the the resilience character stat now grants flinch resistance as well. So that's good. Um, so examples, no, that sources of flinch resistance stack multiplicatively. I said that right. Hey, ha. 100 stability, that's the stat, Suros, pulse rifle, with Suros synergy active, 10 resilience, no distractions, and two unflinching pulse rifle armor mods with, while un, while buffed by rally barricade. Those get a 90% buff uh, flinch resistance, right? I'm not doing all that multiplication there. Uh, a 70 stability stat hand cannon, five resilience, one flinch hand cannon, armor mod, gets a 39% flinch resistance. You can go test this out yourself. Just hop into a private match, test all of, all of it out. But the numbers are there, so if you're curious, go do it. Airborne gunplay, the thing they mentioned before about the Icarus grip and all that stuff. So both with build crafting, they wanted to make fundamental changes to the modifiers applied while airborne. Your primary weapons will have less randomness and projectile accuracy in most cases. You'll have less aim assist instead, and you will need to pre precise aim landing uh, to land your shots without building heavily into airborne. What does this mean? They've added a new weapon stat called airborne effectiveness. Here we go, adding more into the lines. But anyway, let's read this through. It's going to be present on all weapons except for those where being airborne doesn't have an effect. Swords, for example, which maps onto aspects of airborne gunplay while these using uh, while using these guidelines. With little to no investment, zero to three airborne stat, a character will have a smaller accuracy penalty than retail, but will have significantly lower aim assist. With minimal investment, 30, 31 to 50 airborne stat, a character will have around the same in-air accuracy as Icarus equipped weapons do currently, but with notably lower aim assist. So I'm not going to go through all of this. Obviously, there's a difference between uh, the tier levels are at play here. Just like every other stat, so you are we already know the tier list pretty much rocks out to anything below five is pretty much trash, or anything really below four is pretty much trash. Anything above five is a okay. So take that with a grain of salt. If you're gonna start trying to build into the airborne stat because you think you're gonna be floating up in the air all the time, I'm looking at you, my warlock brother brethren. Okay, I know we like Icarus Dash and floating and heat rises and stuff like that. If you are one of those players that do that, this is probably going to make that 10 times better. So, shout out to that. Playlist weapons. These weapons are intended to provide interesting drops even for players who spend a lot of time and in a specific activity. And while we want to keep the large perk pool to address that goal, we want to provide a way to reduce the duration of the chase for players who want a specific weapon. I, for myself, hate this. Okay. Also, since the older playlist weapons are still available as vendor rank up rewards, we want them to feel more relevant in a post origin trait world. So this is a question I've had. And before I finish reading, I hope the next couple of sentences say that they're going to, you know, uh, backdate all of the uh, not backdate. What's the uh, update? All of the older weapons and give them origin traits. So playlist weapons now have a chance to roll with extra traits in one or both columns increasing the number of rank resets with the vendor during a given season. Note reputation resets each season, so you will need to play these activities each season to unlock the potential for extra perks. Okay, all playlist weapons for from Beyond Light and later will now drop with origin traits. Woo! Let's go. All right. Stat display update. Follow the recent changes to show numbers for all stats instead of just bars. Ha ha. Hopefully you guys have been paying attention to that. We now have numbers inside the game, so we no longer have to rely on Dim or Ishtar to get our stat distribution um, for things that we have. And we also don't need to rely on things like that's D2 Gunsmith or Light.gg. All right. All tools of which I recommend you go check out. And also you can go check out my video, which is going to be somewhere on the screen. There's going to be a little link to it. Um, that tells you that tells you about five different tools that you can use to play Destiny 2. Okay, next up, uh, you know, make sure you go check that video out. Make sure you also, you know, like, subscribe, do all that fun jazz. Carry on. Anyway, 
that updates. Now that we have all the numbers showing up inside the game, they've opted to change the stat display on weapons to be more to more clearly reflect the capabilities. All weapon stat bars now range from zero to one hundred instead of being limited to some range in the middle of the bar. Okay, this change eliminates rounding and other errors, particularly on adept weapons, masterworks, and enhanced traits. And other it's convey the bounds of a weapon stat can be exist within. This is purely a display change. No weapon behavior has been changed. You should expect all existing weapons and stat bars to look slightly different, though. Okay, I can't wait to actually see this in, in actual, you know, in game. Uh, it's probably uh, what I'm thinking is it's probably going to look like, you know, how the tier bar system works where they have like the notches on the tier bar. It's probably going to look like that. And it's just going to show all the little notches and then stop at a certain point And that's it. Right. So at least, you know, exactly where that is. And it's going to gray out the rest of the bar, which is good. That's that'll show you the mid and mid mid and max of where the weapon is, because um, a lot of the times what happens is there's an older weapon that has a reprised version of that weapon, which means that there's an older weapon and then there's a newer version of that weapon it will have uh, a different set of stats. So I'm going to use the Eye of Soul from Trials of Osiris. The original Eye of Soul, I believe the max amount of range it could have was somewhere within the 90s, okay? The second version of the Eye of Soul, the max range it could have was about 68. And now the current version of the Eye of Soul, the max range it could have is a 64. Super weird, right? They decided to change that stat. But that is where, I guess that's where they're going to start isolating and allowing you to see it in game now so you know where the weapon lies and what its maximum capabilities are without having to go super far out do your research and find all that stuff on, on other platforms okay so let's carry on the one hit kills and special ammos there are several damage buffs external to weapons that allow weapons to one hit kill without much investment such as an aggressive sniper rifle with high impact rounds or iron as bow or le monarch Specifically, when combined with an external 20% damage buff, as an example, Empowering Rift can give many sniper rifles a one-hit body shot and capabilities in the Crucible. So things like that, they're going to be adjusting. Most of, the, most of these use the same buff under the hood, so we've adjusted them all at once. With these changes, it's going to be much rarer to get an easy one-hit kill with a weapon that would typically allow it. Reduce the damage bonus for Empowering Rift, High Energy Fire, Inertia Override from 20% to 15% against players. No effect in PvE. This is all on the one side of the sandbox, which is PvP. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. If it does, make sure you report it. If you see anything, any changes that seem to be slipping over from the PvP change into PvE, make sure you speak up about it if you notice it. If you don't notice it, carry on. In addition, we want special ammo to be less painful, making it more difficult to chain special weapon kills, disabled ammo scavenger mods, and PvP. Wow, it's finally come to pass. The thing that people have constantly complained about. And it, I feel like it just shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. I don't think that change was necessary. I don't even agree with this at all. And I'm not a PvP player. Like, come on. Like, one brick? I just don't think the consistency of the brick. Maybe you need to chain two kills in order to get a brick. But let's see what they got to say about this. They changed that. So no more ammo uh, scavenger mods. No matter how much ammo a player was carrying on death, if you pick up a special brick, you can only get one ammo for a shotgun slash sniper kill. That's correct. Right. Um, and then they say one kills worth of ammo for weapons that require more than one shot to kill for runner trace rifles. Okay. Return retune spe ser several special weapon archetypes and exotic weapons. See below with the general goal of reducing the effectiveness and uptime of special weapons. See again, they didn't mention anything else other than that they just took away the scavenger mods for PvP. I don't think they needed to do that. I think they just needed to limit it to something like, hey, you need to get like, kind of like orbs of light. You need to get two kill chain kills in order to get a brick of a special, right? So if your shotgun starts out with two shots, you got two chances. You get the kill. If you can get two kills. Back to back, you get a brick, and that brick gives you back one bullet. Boom. Now, are you chaining chaining shots after that one bullet? No, but that reduces the amount of ammo you can pick up. So how does how is this gonna work now? Primary kills are gonna give me special ammo. And then what? Like, we're just gonna still see an uptick. We'll see. Okay, we'll see. I mean, they saying they saying you need to chain special. Special weapon kills. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Archetypes. Special weapons in particular. Shotguns and fusion rifles are responsible for more than one hit kills. 
in PvP. So what are they going to do about it? All special weapons have had their in-air accuracy significantly reduced. Damn, that's going to put shotguns in the air. <laughs> While we are okay at countering players to build into this, use your primary weapons more effectively in the air. We do not believe a pre prevalence of airborne one-hit kill options is good for PvP. So special weapons have a slightly larger airborne accuracy penalty than primary weapons um, at zero airborne effectiveness stat and reduced at 100. At zero at 100. Special weapons have a similar airborne assist cone penalty to other weapons, around 50% at zero stat. And then this penalty can be reduced, but not entirely removed by investing into airborne effectiveness. All right. Sniper rifles are fairly slow to ready, slow and aim down sights, which has made snapshot feel mandatory for many players. Reduce the stow, st ah, the stow, the ready, and the aim down sight times by 10%. So it should be a little bit faster, even with those bulky snipers. Okay. Slug shotguns and pellet shotguns are still overwhelmingly popular. So despite some recent changes, they've touched them again with the goal of encouraging more diversity in the special weapons slot. All right. Since they've touched the shotguns multiple times recently, they will adjust it if needed. But the change they are hoping to get from this is that shotguns have a shorter one hit kill distance. All right. This change reduces shotguns one hit kill distance by around 0.5 meters. You can go find out what that is in game and see how you like the feel of it. Okay. A lot of this stuff you can't you can't know what this stuff means or how it actually is gonna look until you go in and play the game. I highly suggest before you open your mouth, go in the game and try it out. Okay, it's going to feel different and try every single art type of weapon before you open your mouth. Thank you for watching. I'm not done yet though. Fusion rifles. Okay, the usage is trending pretty high again, particularly in trials, bringing shotguns down a little bit more. All right, fusion rifle one hit kills are very common. Of course, you got just things like Jotun, your main ingredients. And I think that new one, the Snorri, is actually kind of starting to take up a little bit of a place too. Uh, and then I believe there's also a new raid and a new trials fusion rifle. I could be wrong on that one. Am I wrong? Right, maybe, possibly. Somebody correct me on that one and down in the comments below. Let me know. What are you, what's your favorite trials weapon to use anyway? Say it, sound off down below. All right, they reduce the damage fall off near distance um, for the fusion rifles. So two two meters at zero range, and then one point three meters at a hundred range. Uh, they reduce the damage fall off from far distance from one meter at zero range into one point three meters at a hundred range, and then the, obviously the ADS stats are there as well. Uh, so you got two point seven meters when ADS with the the reduce the up uh, up uh, uh, reduced damage fall off near distance, and then two point twenty seven. I'm going to say 2.3 um, when ADS at a 15 zoom stat. So, like, any ones with 15 zoom stat, you can take it with a grain of salt. Anything with more than a 15 zoom stat, you're going to be able to get a better kill with it, right? So, people, th I think this is to change up people from using the low zoom, um, the low zoom fusion rifles to using the high zoom fusion rifles so that they can get a kill being more in line between, like, what, I guess a scout rifle and a sniper or something like that. So, which I, I believe that's what the intent of those weapons originally were. Uh, and now we have this. Primary weapons, the auto rifles and pulse rifles aren't as competitive. They're going to be bumping those up a little bit. Uh, which I'm actually pretty happy about this because it, it felt super weird when going from a 340 to a 450 and then also to a 540. The 540s are supposed to feel weak because they shoot super fast, but you can pull out, push out more shots, right? Um, the 340s feel a lot, uh, feel really good, but also very heavy and bulky, but they do a lot more damage. The 450 just felt like it was in this weird space in between where it wasn't even doing any. It felt like the pellets weren't even doing any damage, even though it fell in between the two archetypes. So it should be able to keep up and it just can't like both those. The two other archetypes were beating it out damage wise. And it's like, come on, like these, these have a pretty good uh fire rate. So why not? Right. Um, so hopefully that boost to the precision scaler and the, the damage fall off distance will help out with that. Uh, zoom is important factor on a submachine gun and submachine guns with low zoom don't feel competitive in PvP. We reduced the variant and zoom, brought the base zoom up from 13 to 14 and then extended the damage fall off distance. With this change, several standard zoom submachine guns will now be more competitive, but this does make the inaccessible submachine gun with highest perk slash trait RNG multi mock compete less with auto rifles and no longer straight up outclass every other submachine gun in PvP. All right, I still don't think submachine guns should be shooting at crazy ranges like that to even compete with an auto rifle, but that's just me. 
Okay. They made these following adjustments here to Shiora's Wrath, Multimox, Stochastic, Variable, Icolos, uh, SMG, the Seventh Seraph, Every Waking Moment, and the Huckleberry. You can check that. Ah, they are starting to make adaptive submachine guns. I'm sorry, there's a lot of ah, in this video. But in the current form, they kill a little too fast with body shots, which is true. Uh, so they are reducing the body damage to increase their body shot time to kill by one bullet without impacting their optimal time to kill. So decrease body damage from 12 to 11.25 and then increase the precision multiplier by 1.3 from 1.3 to 1.4. Okay. Uh, precision frames, hand cannons have always been good while airborne and effectiveness and grips. So let's see what they got to say about that. Uh, since there's no more Icarus grip, the intrinsic is switched from 75% airborne accuracy penalty reduction to plus 25 airborne effectiveness stat. This means that if you had a Frontier's Cry with an Icarus grip mod on it, you would be at a 19 plus 25. Ah, come, come on with the numbers. 59. You'd be at a 59. Jesus. Cut. Let's go. Heavy weapons. Machine guns still aren't where they want them to be in PvE, so they're giving them an additional buff. But less so against bosses with their extremely long range and deep ammo reserves would make them strong in too many rolls, which is great. All right. So they increased the damage in PVE by uh, 40% and 20% versus bosses. Xenophage and Grand Overture received this buff, except for the bonuses versus bosses. Sword stats have been inconsistent for a while, so we've tidied all of them up. This is very long and mostly cosmetic. Fix several inconsistencies in stat displayed between different swords. And this has no impact on gameplay. So why am I even reading that? Next, rocket launchers. Sub families were differentiated enough by the previous change. So we made the differences more extreme with this change. We expect more to be expect there to be more marked trade-off for intrinsic tracking on precisions and a greater benefit for the other subfamilies specific relative. Specific, specified relative to the baseline, i.e. high impact rocket launchers. Precision damage is negative minus 10% damage for precision rocket launchers. High impact rocket launchers has no change and then adaptive and aggressive have a plus 10% damage. Right. Exotics. All that shipped from before Forsaken release now have their kill tracker visible by default. Fighting Lion needed a bit of a buff. They did that. Um, Eyes of Tomorrow as a raid exotic ought to be better against tough PvE enemies with this change. It's a solid option in this role, particularly with the adaptive ordinance perk active. So they increased the damage versus bosses and champions by 30%. I'm guessing this is because Galahorn is out and Galahorn is actually slapping a lot of different things. It just wasn't keeping up with uh Eyes of Tomorrow wasn't keeping up with that. So here we go with the buff. Leviathan's breath. It always felt this should absolutely wreck champions and using it for a shot to stun an unstoppable without it doing much damage felt bad. So Archer's tempo from its catalyst is significant on paper, but in practice, that draw speed buff isn't as noticeable. noticeable. Um, so I'm guessing they're giving that a little bit of a tweak. All right. The standard draw time scaler for Archer's tempo is 0 0.75. It is now 0 0.5625 times that on Leviathan. Numbers. Love it. Bungie. All right. They've also added a small delay before detonation on champions, mini bosses, and bosses. This allows the impact to stun an unstoppable and the detonation to deal bonus damage against the stun champion. They changed the damage change to be more of an even split between impact and detonation and increase the damage across the board by 50%, which is great. So the overall damage to a champion is roughly doubled, even when compared to shooting an unstunned, unstoppable champion. That's good. The Huckleberry had an underwhelming en engagement range. Nobody cares. It's SMG that has Rampage on it. So, sure. Let's give it more range, right? Increase the zoom stat. That's how you give it more range. Cool. Uh, Xenophage. They pushed it into harder hitting, but slower firing, and it didn't pan out. So, they're increasing the fire rate again from what it is now. So they increased it from what? 100 to 120. So it should be a little bit faster now. And they reduce the damage per bullet to match the previous. Doesn't benefit from the season 17 machine gun damage buff versus bosses though. So keep that in mind. So the Monarch, too oppressive. They're gonna be nerfing that a little bit, but they felt that it could be stronger in PVE. So it's oppressive in PVP, not in PVE. With the change, they combined the damage buff change above and introduced a 60% resilience gate on killing a guardian in PVP with a crit while in an empowering rift or similar. Okay, reduce the poison tick damage versus players by 
and change the poison damage type from burn to poison. This is a largely housing and not gameplay significant. They've also increased the damage tick, the, uh, the, the poison damage tick versus the AI by 50%. Lorenz Driver can be very difficult to fight against in PvP, but that is because of the high body shot stat. So they're changing that, getting left super weak by a body shot, which would be less common. And they're keeping an eye on how this change lands and may revisit it later. So reduce body shot damage against players by 20%. And the uh, one hit kill with a body shot while empowering Rift combined with that is also prevented, period. The body shot reverts to its old behavior when it's in the weapon's da uh, damage mode. Precision damage in any mode unchanged. Uh, Skyburner's old felt like it didn't have a niche except for airborne memes. <laughs> so they made a bunch of changes aiming to improve its ease of use to give it more utility and really push it into an airborne role. They've increased the ADS speed um, to 999999999999. All right. And then both the ADS and the hip fire are now 150 RPMs. The hip fire projectile no longer tracks, but arcs similar to a grenade launcher and has a larger. Uh, detonation size and ads whoa 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 back it up there so wait just the the airborne hip fire wait or just the hip the hip fire no longer tracks that was that was the the niche of the gun so they said the gun didn't have a niche that was the niche the hip fire tracked that was the point the hip fire oh my god they just okay okay i'm gonna let that one rock the hip fire detonation applies to burn targets. The bonus range from the masterwork has been rolled into the base stat of the weapon. The masterwork now grants reload speed instead and has the highest airborne effect of the stat of any weapon in the game. I guess. Uh, sure. Last word plays very differently on mouse and keyboard than it does in controller. Duh. Uh, but this disparity doesn't need to be that large. We've kept an eye on this one too. They've reduced the mouse and keyboard recoil penalty by 33% or from 33% to 22%. Arbalist is more dominant than intended in hard PvE content, able to fill the anti-barrier role as well, shield breaking and boss damage, and they made small adjustments to it for a future season, so they reduced the damage versus the champion by 20%. It'll still break the barrier in one hit, but the damage behind that will not, you know, be there anymore, which I think is kind of sad. I feel like that's what it's, it needed to be like that, but again, it was, that last season it was up really high because of the linear fusion buff stuff. And now, like they're, I feel like they're just putting it into place to so that it doesn't stand out anymore amongst anything else that buffs something that's you know being highlighted during the season. Graviton Lance's catalyst didn't help with the weapon damage, or didn't help with the weapon enough, and they wanted to give it more of a boost. So the changes, uh, so they're making some changes for both PVE and PVE, PVP, and particularly to the buff to the to the uh, the buff to exotic primary weapons in which. Catalyst change from granting hidden hand to granting Vorpal weapon and turnabout. Grand. So now my my graviton lance has Vorpal and turnabout. That's that's nasty. That's actually really nasty. Grand Overger's most recent adjustment switched the missiles to fire and five bursts, which allows for a more granular and unloading that damage. But sometimes you just want them all to fly out at once. Reduce time between bursts while in missile mode. Hold the trigger. Will now fire all missiles in a continuous burst. Tap will fire in five round bursts. I like it. Thank you for the change. Cold Heart, the arc damage type update and Cold Heart's exotic trait, more or less being it's a trace rifle, no longer fits in, the, in a world of trace legendary trace rifles. So the ease of use on sustained damage was also pretty low. So the sustained damage creates an ionic trace and collecting an ionic trace grants energy to all your abilities. You've increased the grace time before the damage ramp clears and from to just one second, which is great. So now there's just, you know, no other little tiny delay in between. Prometheus Lens's solar damage update, um, it needed some tweaks. So the sustained damage applied are more useful to, to burn targets. The wave splitter. The void damage type update and the power cycle mechanic was interesting, but ultimately hard to capitalize on. Power level no longer cycles randomly. The default damage output is the same as the old middle tier. Picking up an orb of power grants 10 seconds of maximum power and caps at 20 seconds up to 5 and 10. And it now suppresses targets while granted this mode by picking up an orb. Cool. Osteo Striga's projectile somehow shipped rotated by 90 degrees. It looks a bit weird. 
corrected rotation on the projected projectile model. And then Lord of Wolves, it's a shotgun, but it has a custom tuning. It wasn't impacted by the previous shotgun change. It was too much strong, was too much too strong with shotguns and fusions, getting reduced range and bringing it more in line. They've reduced the damage fall off start and end by 25%. Perks. <laughs> Note where an enhanced perk exists and an adjustment is needed. It's been adjusted in the same way. Snapshot sights. It's felt mandatory on sniper rifles forever. With this change, the sniper rifle with snapshots will feel about the same, but with one snapshot, will, without one snapshot, will feel slightly happier. All right, increased ADS animation speed scaler. We read that uh, uh, up above. Open and shot felt mandatory on shotguns for, and forever, in part because it gives part of the buff as a damage fall off scaler. This isn't something we like on short range weapons. You can feel the range bump with this change unless range is already capped. All right, so they removed the dam damage fall off. They've increased the range stat bonus and other stats from this perk are unchanged. Cool. Full choke has been the go-to magazine perk forever, justified or not. Um, so they increased the, increased the speed angle, the spread angle scale from 0 0.9 to 0 0.96 and these little tiny numbers in between like decimal places. We like, Bungie likes decimals. All right, they like, they like numbers. They like numbers. Smooth bore has always felt like an awkward magazine perk. So they're buffing that a little bit. The spread angle on that one is going to be from 1.0 to 1.1. Desperado, stupidly strong perk, is in, in its current form, but they like to be able to put it on more weapons without breaking PvP. Understandable. Okay. So with the adjustment, it's still strong, has more PvE utility, and can be applied to pulse rifle subfamilies aside from the high impact. Well, that sound dangerous. So they increased the fire recovery scaler from 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. Doesn't fire as fast with the perk active. All right. They reduced the duration from seven seconds to six. I don't know about that. And then they removed it, removed the PVE damage penalty. Yes. Because you could definitely tell the damage fall off was there whenever you activated it in the PV PVE. Um, I have a couple of different roles that have it. And it's just like, it just doesn't feel as, as, as meaty. Uh, Air Assault. It's a perk that has been shelved for way too long. They rebuilt it and it now grants plus 60 airborne effectiveness um, to the airborne effectiveness stat. All right, same trigger conditions as the Eye of Storm, right? So look for that. So now, now we're gonna be able to build these weapons out into like this this one particular stat. So it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good with that. Uh, compulsive reloader. Oh, my bad. No, I skipped it. Mulligan. It was never quite strong enough to warrant a pick previously, but buffing it would have been risky on special weapons. With this change, it's useful on rapid fire primary weapons where you don't expect every shot to hit. All right. Occupying a similar role to triple tap, but inverted. It increases the chance to return ammo on a miss from 20% to 35% on primary ammo weapons and then unchanged on special and heavy ammo. Compulsive reloader shipped a little weak. Uh, gun, it doesn't make any, it's a perk that to me that doesn't make any sense. Um, and I like giving my opinions before I actually read the rest of the thing. So yeah, you you kind of notice that trend. Um, so with the change, they look like they feel like it's going to be like a, a nice little reload buff. They increased the reload stat from plus 40 to plus 50. And they added a 0 0.95 uh, reload animation scaler. I feel like they need to change that perk up a little bit, though, because it's 40 at the top of the magazine. Or if they don't need to change the perk up, they need to put it on a, a different subset of weapons because... Right now, it's on weapons like auto rifles, where you if you dump auto rifles and SMGs, where you dump the mag and you're already beyond the point of you know taking advantage of that reload. Versus if it was on something like a sniper or a fusion rifle or a shotgun, um, those guns are more are closer to you know you being at the top of a magazine when you need to reload in a situation where you should. Okay, so I feel like they need to reevaluate where they're placing the, this this particular perk because it's not on a, a lot of it's not on a correct subset of weapons. Adagio, mm. this is one of my favorite perks, and it's it's in the favorite of you know not liking it so much because it's like either it feels good or it doesn't feel good depending on the archetype and depending on the weapon. Obviously, um, it could be a hindrance or it could be a good thing, but. I feel like 
they've tried to adjust it in a good in a good and fair way and i think the last adjustment to it was pretty decent it didn't affect the fire rate too badly they changed it so that it was a, a little bit of a buff um so adagio was allowing for a one hit body shot from slug shotguns um while this is it possible with other perks such as swashbuckler the investment required to trigger the perk is too low for that power right so with that they reduced the damage bonus to shotguns by 30 percent. there you go done done deal there mods Icarus grip now grants the airborne effectiveness stat instead of the previous airborne accuracy so they removed the airborne accuracy scaler now grants plus 15 airborne effectiveness stat and then the adept Icarus mod now grants plus 15 airborne effectiveness stat and plus five handling that's it okay wait <laughs> more weapon talk <laughs> so uh, next season the season after there uh wait weapon tuning that's what we were just talking about and then we're talking about next seasons and stuff like that well we got more stuff to come upcoming sandbox information to keep players like you in the know just before the season ended um they announce a list of weapons and be rotating in and out and all that kind of stuff. They do this regularly every time, you know, a season is about to come and get dropped. So you can understand and be get excited for what's, what's new to come. So next season, the season and the season after will be no different. Uh, and in order to keep the loot pool different every single time so that there's something better to chase and then something for you to kind of like have a little bit of a FOMO too, but also know that, hey, they will be bringing this back at some point, maybe retooth and all that kind of fun stuff but here's what you got to look forward to this includes with like nightfalls and, and grandmasters and stuff like that as well as trials of osiris and the, the seasonal playlist things right so they are going to be talking about the list of weapons that will be rotating in and out for season 18 in the hopes of giving you a full season to target anything that you might be missing for okay what's going to be leaving the pools at the beginning of season 17 is iron banner the occ occluded fi finality sniper and the finite impactor hand cannon thank you because i hated both of those weapons um actually no the sniper rifle i like but the hand cannon not so much um night falls the comedian shotgun and the palindrome hand cannon gonna miss my hand cannon the shotgun get him out of here i hate trials of osiris shiora's wrap submachine gun and the messenger pulse rifle please don't take my pulse rifle <laughs> like i need that all right but i'm interested to see what else they're gonna bring in here i like the fact that they brought out a uh a scout rifle a a a fast scout rifle at that a full auto scout rifle one of my favorite archetypes so can't wait to see what they're gonna bring back for iron banner um sad to see shiora's go wasn't too much of a fan of it uh it's a smg it's a void smg felt like it could have been a different archetype maybe a solar smg would have been great um just to kind of give it a little bit of variety because we already have enough void smgs in the game um and then leaving the loot pools at the beginning of season 18 the peace balance sidearm never really even saw it drop the arc the archon's thunder machine gun again another one never really seen drop so not really upset about them going they were two archetypes that people didn't really even use anyway so there we go and the roles weren't too too great on them either for the nightfalls the plug one fusion rifle is going bye bye and the head hothead rocket launcher are going bye bye uh plug one kind of sad to see you go the hothead didn't get to see you too often i have one and one only one haven't seen it since okay trials of osiris the eye of soul sniper rifle and the summoner auto rifle are going bye bye which is incredibly crazy to me because the summoner has gotten no shine for quite a long time same as the eye of soul i believe they brought that back towards the end of the year last year same with the summoner summoner just came back this season so i'm not too sure of why they're removing that from the loot pool but it is what it is i think these are going to be consistent uh consistent removals every every time the um they go in and out of a season or a beginning of a year maybe because i and i hope we see it before the end of a year again that's that's all i got for that one those are the ones that are on their way out uh season 18 is a ways out though so weapons included in our plant rotation are subject to change good to know i uh, hopefully it does change because a few of those are some outliers that you know they don't get enough shine anyway um but a few of them can definitely get the heck up out of here man. i'm looking at you comedian so and then let's see uh near term abilities tuning for the love of god end it, please okay we're almost done um weapons the uh, ability tuning uh 
All that weapons talk, blah, blah, blah. Axiom Bolt's cooldown. <laughs> Wait, no. They released a hotfix. They will be releasing a hotfix on April 26th. So look for this. This is going to be a hotfix to adjust some of the cooldown conversation that's been going on with uh, abilities. So here we go. Uh, Axiom Bolts has cooldowns increased from 91 seconds to 152 seconds. Great. Titan's Barricade's base, cool, base cooldown with the Bastion Void aspect is now 82 seconds up from 53. This matches the rechange rate of Warlock Rift. The offensive bulwark now provides 60% less bonus grenade energy regeneration in PvP modes. The Whisper of Change now provides 50% bonus damage resistance against players when they are near stasis crystals, down from 25%. It's unchanged versus PvE targets, of course. Renewal Grasp. While equipped, Renewal Grasp increased the base cooldown of the Dustfield Grenades from 62 to 152. Oh, there you go. You got that. And then the outgoing damage penalty applied to player victims in the Renewal Grasp Dustfield is reduced from 50% to 20%. The damage unchanged for PvE targets, though. And then stay tuned for the full patch notes when they come out on the 26th. All right. Gambit. Oh, God, Gambit. Gambit Labs is going to be running, having a second run coming into play soon. So invasion swaps went off pretty well, they say, giving us great data and feedback, moat dunking, invasions, cadence, and all that kind of fun jazz. Uh, so look forward to that on April 26th as well, uh, or that the week of the 26th to see all of that kind of stuff with the moat thieves and things of that nature. Hope for you, all you Gambit fanatics, have fun. Okay. They're not going to be changing too much with it. The original concept, the invader uh, was guardian is taken terror, overpowered and dangerous and something new to have to fight. While they're very compelling, they don't believe it's the only compelling invader fantasy. So they believe sneaky moat thief is worth exploring too. So normal mode, normal moat drain from having two blockers is disabled. And instead, every second the invader is invading, one moat will drain directly from the bank to the invader's bank. So I think that's kind of cool. So now the intention is to not go in and kill the other team. The intention is to go in and hide while also killing the other team. So you got to play, play sneaky sniper. I like it. Uh, but keep in mind, the invaders need to be near the bank in order to drain the moat. So this is, this is definitely going to be interesting. Uh, this won't be too much of a hide and seek affair. So do prioritize clearing the active, active front of enemies or help your teammates address the beefed up titan relaxing behind their barricade looking to steal more of hard earned moats so have at the i'm, I'm kind of interested to see this i want to see a couple of streams that it, that's going to make this change and see it make it make it look interesting okay go check out your prime rewards for the month we got some new ones up here obviously all that kind of fun jazz make sure you uh utilize your prime gaming sub if you haven't already you can use it on my channel over at twitch.tv slash roads of silence you know, it should pop up somewhere here on the screen as i'm saying this right now so go do that please would appreciate it very much all right thanks okay bye make sure you use it you waste the money if you don't okay if you got amazon prime you link it to twitch you get a prime gaming sub Go put that bad boy at twitch.tv slash roads of silence. Back to the show. And what else do we have here for the rest of this glorious, glorious twab? What is your quest? Somewhat tricky keeping track of every quest in Destiny 2 has to offer. An occasion, quests may be abandoned to make space for other things in your inventory to help focus on some of the more important storylines a player is completing. Where do quests go when they've been abandoned? While an easy answer for some, not all in the community are aware of said kiosk that holds these things. This week, Destiny Player Support has a rant rundown on hotfix timelines for next week, as well as some general guidance for players seeking to cross a bridge on their journey to find the Holy Grail. Okay. Then they talk about the contest mode, emblem grant, uh, grant and all that fun stuff. People who, who did that, the 24 hour contest mode has been extended, granted the day, the pyramid triumph and cleaver emblems um, for qualifying players of those. Uh, also make sure you check your postmasters for that stuff if you didn't get it immediately in your inventory, if you didn't have an open slot. Um, the quest archive, players who are missing these quests or who are attempting to reacquire previously abandoned quests should visit the quest archive in the tower uh, located near the postmaster and a shame that, you know, people are overlooking this, which it's very common because 
it's right next to the postmaster inside of a little bit little corner i believe they should place this somewhere else with a bigger sign to let people know that this is what it is um the location that it currently is i I'm, i don't blame people for missing out on where this this kiosk is it is next to the postmaster in a tiny corner hidden you know what the thingy hi i'm here you looking for your abandoned quest hey look it's the postmaster you want to know where they are? Uh, there, <laughs> right there. It's like it's it's like it's it's trash or something. And they put it in a corner where you would probably find some trash. It's it's all dirty. There's leaves and stuff over here. But there's a kiosk right here, quest archive. There is also a place in the helm that you can go to that has it as well. Right there. I'm not sure if it shows. No, it shows up on the map too. So yeah. Okay, and the helm right next to the the the, the vault postmaster thingy. So that's it. Okay, that's it. And then we got our schedule for the hot fixes. Of course, April 26, Tuesday. Uh, hot fix 4.0.1.1 will be released 9 a.m. Pacific time, 9:45. Uh, Destiny will be brought offline. Uh, 10 a.m. The hotfix will begin to roll out, and then 11 a.m. The maintenance should be complete, and you'll be able to log right back into the game and get back to doing whatever you were doing. Other than that, carry on. Uh, below is a list of issues that are scheduled to be resolved by that hotfix. The Summoner Rifle from Saint 14's Reputation Reward uh, will not be missing its masterwork slot. The Light Blade and the Birthplace of Vile Grandmaster Nightfalls uh, will. Be, will be uh, that they, that they did not count towards the con conquest title. They will that will be fixed, and then the gambit primeval shield uh, issue should be fixed as well. But fingers crossed. All right. Also, the most notable known issues that are being looked at right now: renewal grasp damage buff, buff fall off. Uh, damage buff does not always function within a dust field grenade area of effect. So they're looking into that. The sweet sorrow auto rifle has an overlay. Overly bright muzzle flash, like just like previous ones before it. The words in the text chat may display vertically. Uh, this can be resolved by restarting Destiny. And then uh, Lumina's muzzle flash is a bright compared to other hand cannons. Other than that, there's other issues that are going on that they're trying to currently they're currently trying to fix. You can go check those out in the known issues article by clicking the known issues section there. And then that is it. Outside of that. Go support your, your my fellow content creators across for the movie of the week. So go check all of these wonderful, wonderful people out, as well as the artists for artists of the week. Go check all of these cool, talented people out. Show them some love. And then that's it. And then finally, our, our goodbye message here. Seven is the magic number. Depending on when you're reading this, Trials is returning tomorrow after a short hiatus. It will be another Labs weekend featuring Capture the Zones. Last time Trials was available, a pesky little bug had slipped in, granting a few additional adept rewards to players on the Confidence Passage. Okay. Well, good news, everyone. This was sort of a feature. It was discussed during the patch notes, and they're now finally at finally putting it into play. Um, so instead of you having to get, and I'll just summarize all of this up for you for the most part. So instead of you having to get a full flawless passage repeatedly, now you only have to go flawless once. And then with that same ticket, you can consistent, continuously play games and get adept weapons, a chance at adept weapons. I don't want to say you can consistently get them, but you get a chance to get said adept weapons from the post-match results. So... More incentive to get adept weapons in that regard instead of having to try to force yourself to try to go get flawless and, you know, go through that struggle bus. Um, in any case, looking forward to watching the feedback for all this other stuff is what they are saying. Um, and so on and so on. They are looking to grab good rolls of whatever redacted is coming and then that's it and spend the weekend doing the rest of the trials. So other than that, they have lead. Hope you guys enjoyed the TWAB. This was I, I had fun. I haven't read a TWAB in months. I appreciate you guys even coming through to check all of it out. Thank you for hanging out with me. I see you guys later. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me. See you later. Thanks.